Hey everyone, welcome to section 8.1, question 8. Here we are in, uh, comparing three different investment opportunities. Now what we'll do in this uh, question is we will take a look at investment 1 and you should be able to um, calculate and compute the rest. So let's look at, look at investment 1. So we have a 5 year investment with a cost of $125 and a promised payout of $250. So, of course, we want to take a look at it from a timeline point of view, just so we can see what's happening. So, again, we have basically, we have an investment, and we started, we paid a present value or a price of $125, um, and it's matured after five years, okay, and now it's worth $250, okay. So, Ultimately, we, what we're trying to figure out, so in, again, five years. What we need to figure out is what's the rate of return, okay? So what percentage um, makes our money mature from $125 to $250? So there's two ways to, to go about figuring this out, okay? And we'll start with uh, using the holding period uh, rate, which is our profit over cost. Then we'll annualize that rate by... Um, figuring out our effective annual rate. Okay, so that's the first uh, method. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up some equations that will help us. Okay, so when we're calculating the holding period rate, uh, we can use our ending price plus distributions divided by beginning price minus one. So let's, um, well, let's write down what we know. Okay, so we have ending price, distribution, and beginning. price. All right, so in this case, again, our ending price, and it's nice to see it on our timeline, we see we end with 250, okay? Uh, there's no distribution, so there's no additional, uh, maybe we're getting dividends or things like that, but there's no additional contribution to that ending price. And our beginning price, again, what did we start off with? Well, we started off with $125, okay? So that was the um, beginning price or cost. So, to solve for our HBR, let's use our equation here. Ending plus distribution divided by beginning. Okay, and we're going to subtract that all by one. There we go. Okay, so if you think of it in terms of a rate, you're looking looking at is in other words, we doubled our money in five years. Um, so that's why we have about 100% um, increase. Now, again, this is not um, annualized, okay? So that's why when you need step two, and in order to do that, we need to figure out our effective annual rate. So we need to reference another uh, formula, okay? We use this to solve for our annual rate. And just a reminder, okay, so our number of years is five years, okay? So that's important because we need to in other words, we need to figure out um, annually what's the return on this investment. So we can go ahead and uh, now that we know our HPR, HPR, okay, we can calculate our ERA. So one plus our holding rate, okay, to the power of one divided by number of years. Okay, 14. So we can make that into a percentage. That's what we're looking for here. Okay, so that's one way. Okay, so that is our ERA. In other words, that is our effective annual rate for investment one. Okay, so just to be clear, this is investment one. And of course, we can go ahead and, you know, when you're working on your problems, you can, you can compute all of them once you punch them in. Let Excel um, help you out with the formulas. But um, again, I'll let you compare them on your own. Now, if you want to use the um, formula method, we can also do that. Okay, so we have Excel. Why not use it? We can also calculate ERA. Okay, if we if we know number of periods or number of years in this case, we know our present value, we know our future value. So that can help us solve for our rate. So our rate, same idea as our um, ERA in this case. So again, to just look at our timeline. Okay, this is our present value. This is our future value, and this is n 
for the number of periods or number of years in this case. Okay, so once we, we plug that in, we should be getting the same results. So we'll use our rate function. No payments being made. Okay, so present value. Just again, make sure one of these numbers is negative. And we have the same value here. Okay, so uh, we can plug that in. And of course, you can go ahead and um, work on the next two other investments. Okay, compare them. Um, you know, which one is the best? Well, that's up to you, obviously. Well, I'm sure you, you know the answer to that. So thanks for watching and happy financing.